What is going on world? What's up guys? It's Zero here. Today everyone, I am super excited to be here with you guys and uh, bringing you all the very first Gears cast. So the Gears cast guys, I can't wait to get into what the Gears cast is going to be, but as I've been hyping on Twitter as well as on YouTube about a big announcement on the Twitch channel as well as on YouTube, I am incredibly excited to share with you guys what all of that is here tonight. And look, it's been a while since I started, you know, have it's been a while since I streamed. I think it's been a number of months now, and that's only because we've been really creating a ton of content on the YouTube channel. So with that, guys, uh, I wanted to kind of change that in, in a number of ways, and we'll get to that here in a sec. But I want to say thanks to everyone for all of the support that we have been getting on the YouTube channel. We've been growing every single day, guys, and it's all because of you all. I mean, we've been growing every day on YouTube. Uh, Twitch, obviously, I think, you know, I don't know how many, you know, active followers I have anymore on, on Twitch, but I plan on, you know, changing that in, in kind of bringing a lot of that same work ethic that we've had on YouTube over to Twitch. And so guys, uh, without further ado, I want to go ahead and give you guys the rundown on the big announcement here on uh, here on Twitch, which is, is, is as we're live now, guys. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we are going to be going live quite regularly now on the Twitch channel. So uh, here's what's happening, guys. The Gears cast. As you guys know, we have been creating, uh, you know, a show every single day on the YouTube channel, that being the 8 Below show. And so the 8 Below show, guys, has been a show that I've been running since November of 2019. And now um, it started as a weekly show and now it is a full-blown daily show. And it's been awesome, guys. We cover all types of different games, uh, gaming as well as entertainment. I had a lot of you guys, though, out there bringing, you know, to my attention and, and talking to me. And it's something that I had certainly been thinking about and trying to figure out for quite some time was some of you were asking about having more, you know, shows that are more directly related to specific games. And so... Over time, guys, I've been trying to put, you know, the pieces together to figure out what that's going to look like. And I'm excited to share, guys, that the announcement is, of course, with this first show going up, uh, that being the Gears cast. This is a Gears of War podcast, guys, that is going to be weekly. Every single Monday, you'll be able to watch episodes of uh, the Gears cast, and we're just going to be talking about everything in the world of Gears of War. With that, though, I'm also launching... Six new shows, guys, on the YouTube channel, and some of those will be streamed live here on Twitch. And so what I'm getting at here, guys, is we have, of course, today being Monday, that is, this is the day that is the Gears Cast or the Gears of War podcast that you can expect. And then on Tuesday, guys, is when we are doing a Watch Dogs podcast. Wednesday will be a Call of Duty podcast. Thursday will be the Last of Us podcast, and then Friday is a StarCraft podcast. And so, all in all, guys, each day of the week, uh, you will have different uh, games that we are going to be having shows specific about. And I wanted to make sure they were games that I felt a real confidence talking about and had a lot of content to bring out regarding those games in particular. And then uh, Saturday and Sunday, guys, of course, Saturday, as I had alluded to, The 8 Below Show is started as a weekly show, went to a daily show, and is now going back to a weekly show. So on Saturday is when you guys will be able to see episodes of The 8 Below Show on the YouTube channel. The 8 Below Show will not be streamed live here on Twitch. It will be directly uh, put out on YouTube. And then Sunday, guys, is a Q&A show that is going to be coming out every Sunday. So I have a lineup of content, guys, that's going to be coming out based around a number of different games. And of course, The 8 Below Show is about gaming and entertainment at large and then a Q&A where you guys can ask me anything and uh, a lot of those questions it'll be all viewer submitted questions and such that we'll be going through 
on the Q&A. So that's the big announcement, guys. We are um, kind of taking this approach where I wanted to go ahead and green light a number of other shows outside of the 8 Below show, and I'm very excited about it. And as I said, our first show, that being tonight, is the Gears cast. So let's get into what the Gears cast is, guys. First of all, I want to say welcome to the Gears cast, guys. Uh, episode number one of this show. And what it is, is not is going to be none other than a, a podcast directly related to everything Gears of War, from the game to the meta to uh, the esports side of things to uh, everything pretty much under the sun regarding Gears of War. And I could not be more excited about it. And so the way the show is going to work, guys, is I'll give you guys the topics of the day that we are going to talk about. And then we'll go through each of those. I'll give you guys some comments and things of that nature uh, from myself and kind of give you my spiel. And then afterwards, at the end of the show, I'll take any questions that you guys have that relate to the topics of the day. So with that, guys, tonight on the Gearscast, episode one, we are going to be talking about some of the new things that are being added to Gears of War this week. So that'll be uh, the first part of this. There's, of course, every, new things being added to the game and changed throughout, you know, pretty much every week of, of Gears 5. So we'll talk about that. And then, of course, guys, I want to talk about uh, the esports side of Gears. Uh, of course, coming off of a huge weekend, the biggest weekend of the year for Gears of War. So I wanted to talk about Gears Esports and what this weekend could mean for the future of Gears of War and Gears of War Esports as a whole. And then, of course, guys, our next topic after that, I want to talk about Gears of War and the potential of it going free to play after the announcement and news regarding Halo Infinite. And then lastly, guys, of course, to wrap up the show, I, of course, want to talk about some Gears 6 stuff. And with that, uh, you guys know uh, that watch my show on, on YouTube, The 8 Below Show, you guys know that I am, uh, of course, very much so known for uh, talking about the future of a lot of these titles. And Gear 6 is no different and just the Gears War franchise as a whole because it's something that I'm very excited about, but we'll get to that here shortly. So, guys, I wanted to go ahead and, as I said, start the show with none other what's happening this week uh, in Gears 5. So we're going to go through this list, guys, of everything that is going on in, in Gears 5 this week because uh, there are some things that they are making a few updates, that being the Coalition. So we're making a few updates to Gears 5. So PvP, free-for-all, change number of uh, players from 14 to 8 in ranked and quick play. Team Deathmatch, winning a match is now best of three rounds. And then with King of the Hill, eliminations are now worth one Gears point. So, a couple of changes. Um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm okay with these changes overall. I think that the Team Deathmatch, winning a match is now best of three rounds. I, I think that's okay. As far as the eliminations, I wish they were still worth two Gears points, but I understand the reasoning behind that. And um, as far as PvE is concerned, in Horde, it's important that the engineer is the most powerful when using fortifications, as building is their primary role. Unfortunately, a small handful of skill cards in the game have been triggering their effects, unintentionally with fortifications causing some non-engineer classes to become much more powerful with fortifications than intended. Because this weakens the role of the engineer, we feel it was important to resolve these issues. We have adjusted the following skill cards to no longer work with fortifications. That's aggressive armor, cold finish, armored shot, the hammer, a serrated edge, and blunt instru instrument. So these all, these relatively make sense. This is definitely something that I heard a number of complaints on. Um, as far as Horde goes, I don't play a, a lot of Horde, but um, I, certainly, guys, it's, it's definitely something that I had heard from, from different people around the community. Now, Versus event, the eight player free for all. So we're mixing up free for all in a big way. Eight players will now battle against each other on select 5v5 maps. And to make it even more interesting, loadouts are limited to a utility grenade, smokes or flashes, and Nasher. 
So that's what's really exciting. This is kind of, you know, obviously it's now with eight players, a lot, you know, going to be more intimate as far as, you know, the people that you're going to be going up against, which is a very interesting concept. I'm definitely excited to see what this is going to be like in the versus playlist. Uh, now featured in Hive, the ambush. The ambush is packed with enemies that come at you from unexpected angles. Go slowly as best as you can with the venom pushing you because you never know when you will trigger enemies as they will come at you from unexpected angles. So of course, guys, with the with the ambush, I'm definitely excited to see what this is all about. And then as far as with featured horde abyss, the abyss is sticking around for one more week. So get that turret and show them what you got. As far as the weekly store is concerned, guys, looks like we're getting the Locust Grenadier Elite, which is 250 iron or 2,000 gears points. Cosmic full weapon set is 850 iron, and the hammer online mark is 200 iron. Now, I was kind of hoping that we would... It's good that the characters overall are you know, we're able to use our gears points for that. I wish like for the cosmic full set and, and even for the online mark for the, the hammer online mark, I wish that we could use our gears points for that as well. But nonetheless, as long as the characters you're able to use your gears points, uh, that's a big deal. And then of course, guys, the other uh, things that are coming, of course, to the store is workout phase a 1500 iron or 10,000 gears points. Uh, do you even lift bro expression? Uh, the Hot Rod Jack and the Hot Rod Full Weapon Set is also going to be coming. As far as the eSports side, the Chrome Steel Baird is $9.99 USD. Now, for me, guys, uh, when it comes to the eSports side of things, I'm okay with them charging uh, you know, USD for that simply because, or just charging money for it, simply because uh, that goes to the prize pool of the Gears Esports side. So I'm totally cool with that overall. So guys, that is what has been going on and what's happening this week in Gears 5. And so each week, guys, we'll go ahead and we'll go through some of the changes if there's any that are coming to Gears 5 that particular week. With that, guys, I wanted to talk about Gears Esports. And we're coming off of a massive, massive weekend. And a, a huge weekend, I mean, for Gears of War and, and, and Gears 5 Esports. So I want to talk about this, guys, and kind of preface, uh, you know, what Gears Esports means to me. And I should probably even preface this around, like, you know, what I what I really feel about, about Esports around Gears of War as a whole is it's something that is so unique. It's unique unlike any other esport out there in the world. And I am incredibly excited about what what happened this past weekend, and I'm excited for the future. Now, obviously the future is uncertain at this point in time. However, guys, Gears Esports tweeted out saying, pure domination. UIU shuts down the Pittsburgh Knights and everyone else to be your 2019-2020 Gears Esports major champions. So of course, guys, congrats, big up to UIU for winning. This is, of course, guys, the most dominant, you know, squad, pretty much mental and explosive. These two guys have been together for so long. Um, even Kenny uh, has been a part of the squad for, for a, you know, on and off over, over the years. But Really, the the center of this of this team and the, the heart of this team is explosive and mental, and they have done an absolutely incredible job at being so dominant throughout the Gears titles. I would have to argue, guys, that they are some of the most dominant esports players in all of esports as a whole. It's an incredible thing to watch, and it was a lot of fun, guys. It was a huge weekend for Gears esports as a whole. UYU did an incredible job. Uh, just, they, I mean, they dominated. It was an absolute domination. They were showing that once again that they are the best in the world, and it's not even close. And so, with that, I was really excited um, for UYU. Of course, wanted to see. It's always nice to see other teams like really compete and be able to um, kind of get get one up on on the champs but UIU even any time that they're down they bounce back in a major way and I think that has to do a lot with their leadership that being of course explosive uh mental doesn't seem like he talks a, a whole lot but 
uh, he his play kind of tells the story just how well he plays. And I mean, the rest of the guys, man, praise. And I mean, of course, Ashes is an incredible coach. Powers, I mean, these are this is a great team overall. I'll be excited to see what they do in the future. Now, this leads me into the second part of this. And, you know, at the end of the day, guys, I absolutely love Gears Esports. However, one of the big things that has been coming around from, you know, uh, a number of, you know, people within the community or even outside the community is the uncertainty that lies ahead for Gears Esports. I'm going to go to a, a tweet, guys, that came out from Jacob uh, Hamilton. He tweeted out saying, people are lost. Gears of War needs to be put down, euthanized, taken behind the garage, if you know what I mean. Game gets 1,000 viewers, barely any money. The game itself sucks. So you can't say you play for fun. What are you competing for? The attention of 100 people. So let's put this into context. And first of all, I'm sure Jacob was, you know, he was exaggerating on, on, on a little bit here. But some of it, I'm wondering, you know, where it's some of it is just, you know, purely false. But what I will say is this, guys, I think there's there's definitely an issue within the community regarding Gears of War esports. And right off the bat, he says that the game gets a thousand viewers. Well, if we look at what Gears of War has done the past three days, which was, of course, for the major, pretty much the world championships of Gears of War, we can see at the top, uh, Gears of War. So the official Gears of War um, uh, stream was, it peaked at 15,000 viewers, average 7,256 viewers. And look, at the end of the day, guys, I I have to obviously with this it's and and this is this is going specifically to Twitch whereas you know obviously it's streamed on YouTube and elsewhere and so what I'm getting at is this I remember there was a number of times I was I was watching all weekend long and really enjoying a lot of the games and so sure is this something is this a game that is getting hundreds of thousands of views or like 50,000 average viewers no it's not doing those types of numbers guys but put this into context. Gears 5 and Gears of War as a whole is an exclusive to Xbox. And so it's already kind of put in a box right off the bat. But these are actually really good numbers for Gears of War, in my personal opinion, from an esports perspective. Now, you could say that maybe they got these numbers because of, you know, the World Championships. But I disagree that Gears of War is is a is a dead game. I think it's more so the community that, you know, with the complaining and such that goes on in the community is becoming, you know, a major issue, in my opinion, when it comes to, to Gears Gears of War and the future of Gears Esports. I'll go back to this because I wanted to look at some of, you know, I looked at some of the comments here. Jippery McCloud, of course, had a pretty funny uh, emoji. But No Mercy Brian, uh, he went ahead and he tweeted stating, uh, responding, saying, honestly, the reason why I, I have to truly debate if it's worth going into next year, top teams want thousands and low-end teams don't make it into the money or on stream. Lose-lose for me as an org owner, so at this point, might be the time to walk away no matter how much passion. Look, at the end of the day, guys, I mean, you know, there is going to be this this comment, I, I, I really should say the tweet as a whole, got a little bit of both sides. Deluxe, he tweeted saying, I've been around Gears since day one. To me, it's still my passion. I think a very passionate community. If someone doesn't have that passion anymore, there's nothing holding them here. The game hasn't always been what everyone wanted, but it's going in the right direction now. And I love that comment by Deluxe. I'm 100% on board with it. And I agree with what he's saying here because look, it's it's not one of those things. It's a, it's a very passionate community in my opinion as well. It's not like the game is you know it's it's holding somebody here or something. You know if they want to move on, other you know some of these teams can move on to other games and such. 
But what I will tell you is Gears of War as a esport, as a game, is one of the most passionate communities I've ever seen. And it's one that's been had gone through some significant peaks and valleys throughout the course of time. But I 100% disagree with Jacob stating that, you know, this is a game that just needs to, you know, the, the, the plug needs to be pulled on this as a game and as an esport. That's just, I mean, this is one of the flagships of a- Xbox. And as far as the esports scene goes, I mean, look, there's way more of a Gears esports scene currently than a Halo esports scene, and it's not even close. Now, will that change? There's a potential that that changes with Halo Infinite. It's hard to say. I would, I would assume so with Halo Infinite going free to play as far as the multiplayer is concerned, but I just, I disagree with, with this as a, as a whole. I mean, I, this is the problem in my opinion is actually with people within the community complaining about everything under the sun when it comes to Gears of War. It goes from, from pro players to the community. The problem is guys, is when you have comments like this from Jacob Hamilton, The problem with that is simply that, you know, Gears of War is one of those titles because it's not as big as something like Call of Duty or one of these other titles out there. It can't really, you know, necessarily be sustained long term with with a lot of backlash and such from the community. The community, whether or not you are, you know, if, if you're passionate about Gears of War and you love this franchise then you should be hoping for the success of it. You should be supporting your favorite streamers, supporting your favorite content creators, supporting, you know, watching the esports scene as a whole. You should absolutely be doing that if you want to see this game continue in the future. I, as far as barely any money, I don't even, I mean, for a game of this size, that being, gear, you know, Gears 5, um... I, you know, a lot of these players aren't necessarily, I mean, sure, they're playing for a paycheck, but at the end of the day, they're also playing for bragging rights, right? This is a very passionate esports scene as well. This esports scene as a whole, these guys are passionate with what they, you know, and prideful of, you know, what they've accomplished and, and things of that nature. So all I'm getting at, guys, is I just, I don't uh, like it when we have people in the community if Jacob doesn't like it, well, you know, we don't need people like that in the Gears eSport, Gears as a whole community, because I think at the end of the day, it really almost creates this infection within the community. And what happens is, is see, for example, with Call of Duty, if there's something, there's an issue with the game, the meta, or people are talking like there's one of the weapons in the game that's too OP or something, sure, there's going to be, you know, some buzz around that if pro players are saying that. But at the end of the day, there's such a much bigger fan base that is, you know, Call of Duty as a whole. So it's more sustainable than with Gears of War when you have a lot of people giving, you know, real negative feedback and hate towards the, you know, the creators, that being like the coalition, the developers and such. So what I'm getting at here, guys, is that we as a community have to support each other moving forward. It's going to be very important. And I believe that Gears of, Gears 5 is in a great position with Operation 4. I, I just, this argument is terrible. And I think that Jacob, unfortunately, is at this point in time, whether he was has always been a hater, I'm not sure, or if he was just, you know, somebody who doesn't like the direction it's going. I really do. These numbers, guys, are showing me at least that there is growth ahead, right? Whether we're talking from Gears 5, we're talking Gears 6, we're talking about just Gears Esports as a whole. There's growth here, guys. 15,377 peak viewers. I mean, that's nothing to scoff at when we're talking about a, a an exclusive uh, title. Is it as big as some of these other titles? Absolutely not. But this is a great stepping stone for what could be coming in, of course, the next seasons of Gears, you know, of Gears Esports. So with that, guys, I certainly want to know in the comment section, uh, you know, or in the live chat, what you guys think about this. 
I, you know, the uncertainty around Gears of War and Gears Esports is a is a real thing. It's absolutely a real thing. Do I believe that Gears, you know, Esports is going to continue? Absolutely. I believe it needs to continue because this is one of the best esports out there. To from a viewership perspective, I think it's just it's incredibly fun. The trash talk's amazing. It's very unique. It needs to coexist with other esports out there, guys. And I don't even think that it's it's even a debate at this point. We need Gears of War Esports. We might need Halo as well. We may need other games too, and that's fine. But Gears Esports needs to continue, guys. Um, and I think that it's it's the pe- it's people in the community spreading negativity, whether it's towards the coalition, towards the game. Look, I'm okay. I'm totally fine with people giving you know their opinion on certain things but i think there's a way in which you got to go about it in a civilized way and obviously we want to echo what we want into existence with specific ordeals within the game whether it's meta uh you know balancing uh you know new game modes things of that nature i just think that we have the way in which that we go about it guys needs to be a little more civilized sometimes because i think sometimes the coalition is getting you know completely they get hit so hard with so much negativity, and at the end of the day, it's not good for anybody. But let me know, guys. What do you all think? Let me know. Let's have a real conversation about it. And that is Gears of War going free to play. Now, there's been a lot of rumor. There's been a lot of speculation on what the future looks like here because of Halo Infinite going free to play. And... You know, I think that when we talk about, you know, Halo going free to play as far as from a multiplayer perspective, what this tells me is that there is certainly a possibility that Gears of War is going to be at least going free to play from a multiplayer perspective as well. Now, there's also talk that Xbox Live is going to be free moving forward, which would be a huge move by Xbox. But even if it wasn't, even if Xbox Live was still you had to pay to play, I think that, you know, having Gears of War as well as Halo, like two of their flagship games, the flagship games of Xbox at this point in time, having those free to play from a multiplayer perspective would be absolutely huge for these titles. I mean, and it's not even close. I mean, I think Gears of War, there would be so many people that would at least be trying the game out. New people coming into the fray and trying trying the game out. You know, trying the, um, you know, from a from a competitive perspective, or just playing it. You know, from horde mode to escape mode to the campaign to, you know, whatever it is, people they would almost get you know drawn in from the free multiplayer, and then they may try some of the other modes and buy a full copy, or at least get Xbox Game Pass, which is of course the Netflix of gaming at this point in time. So, will Gears of War go free to play? I believe it will, guys. From a multiplayer perspective, I've got to say that I believe Gears of War has a ton of potential to go free to play. From a multiplayer perspective, now it's hard to say whether it's going to come very soon or if it's just going to happen when Xbox Live becomes free um, or if, you know, it's going to be like Gear 6 that they decide to go ahead and make Gears, you know, Gears of War free to play with multiplayer. They're certainly testing it out with Halo Infinite. And I think that they would make it would be a great decision moving forward if Gear Six is, you know, free to play, or even Gears Five. Make that free to play. It may be a little bit too far into like the cycle. Um, I think that maybe just waiting till Gear Six to make that free to play would be would be a really good move. But at the end of the day, guys, I'm all on board, 100% on board with making Gears of War free to play. I think with a niche, it's not necessarily. I don't. I've never really thought of Gears of War as a niche title, but because it's contained to Xbox as an Xbox exclusive, I always felt that having aspects of it free to play would be huge moving forward. Absolutely huge. And so with that, guys, Gears of War free to play, I certainly think that it's going to happen in the future, most likely with Gear 6, but I, I certainly wouldn't mind if they made it free to play sooner than that. That would be great, guys. Um, but let me know. What, what do you guys think about that? Do you guys want to see Gears of War go free to play? Do you not want to see it go free to play? I don't know why you wouldn't want to see at least some aspects of it going free to play. Let me know what you guys think. And let's let's have a real conversation about that. You know, with that, guys, that leads me into the last topic here, 
which, you know, is, of course, ways in which Gears of War can be improved in the future. I gotta say, guys, that Gear 6 is a, is a title that I'm incredibly excited about. And it's not because I don't love Gears of War as a whole. I, I, I love Gears, and I think that Gears of War is going to be, uh, you know, I, I love Gears 5. I like the direction it's going in with the operations. But at the same time, I certainly want to see the continuation here of this franchise moving forward. Now, that being said, we, what do we know at this point? Well, we know that Rod Ferguson, the studio head at the Coalition, before he moved on to Blizzard, stated that Gear 6 and Gear 7 are both confirmed. They are coming out. And this was fully confirmed or you know, further confirmed when we saw the Xbox Game Studios and we saw all the studios and what they're working on currently. And the Coalition was on that list and they are working on uh, helping out, collaborating on the reboot for Perfect Dark. And they are also working on Gear 6. So what I'm getting at here, guys, is that Gears 6 is definitely in development right now. Whether it's in a late stage or it's in the early stages at this point is a you know another conversation for another day. But I do believe that Gear 6 is being made at this point in time. And this kind of gets me back to what I was alluding to earlier that we as a as a as a fan base. Uh, you know, need to really come together. We have to support our favorite creators, our favorite streamers and such guys and watch the esports scene because even though Gear 6 and Gear 7 are confirmed, that can all change in a matter of no time if the, you know, coalition decides, look, it's not worth it. There's too many, you know, uh, too much hate towards this game um, based upon just, you know, backlash towards every little thing that the coalition decides to do. Now, that's a part of the community as a whole, but I think that we need to be a little bit more supportive of the coalition and such. Uh, in their endeavors moving forward with Gear 6. But that leads me, guys, to the things that I think that need to happen in order for Gear 6 to be a smash success. So number one for me, guys, is a full open world in the campaign. So what we've had up to this point, guys, we had this linear experience up till Gears 5, and Gears 5 kind of changed all of that by having a you know, uh, a, a semi-open world setting, which I was really skeptical about at first, but now looking back and playing it for ourselves, man, what an incredible experience it was. I mean, an absolutely incredible experience. And I really enjoyed being able to be thrown into this world, into the lore and all of that, uh, and really start learning more about about this world and being able to explore it. So I'd like to see a full open world and that scale in Gear 6. That leads me to the next thing, guys. I think one of the great things that Gears of War does is they do a great job of evolving the franchise by adding new modes, by um, adding like new weapons and, and all of that. I think what the Coalition needs to do with Gear 6 is continuing the uh, the innovation. I want to see a continued innovation moving into Gear 6, you know, continuing to add new ways that we can traverse the world, new ways that, uh, new weapons from a multiplayer perspective to a campaign ex perspective from Horde uh, modes and all those other modes consistently evolving the franchise and even bringing back some old modes like Beast Mode or, you know, Having escape mode come back, the more ways that we can connect with the franchise, the better, guys. It just justifies, you know, the $60 price tag more and more. Um, obviously, with Xbox Game Pass, you know, that wouldn't be an issue, but you get what I mean. That leads me, though, guys, to number three, which for me, this is in relation to the esports scene in Gears of War. I believe, guys, that with esports, um, I, I think that simplicity is a really important thing. I love the direction that they're going in with Gears Esports, as I had alluded to earlier, and the direction it's going in, the production value and all of that. I love where we're going. The casters are, are great, top-notch casters, guys, in, in, in the esports scene. But I would like to see them change the game mode from escalation to execution. I know they kind of were testing this out earlier in Gears 5, but I think execution, guys, the reason why I believe they need to go in that direction 
is because it's a little bit easier to understand for new viewers. We look at escalation and, you know, it's obviously a very uh, a very competitive mode. I think it's one of the best modes in esports. I really love watching it. But for new viewers, it's a lot easier to understand that, okay, they're just trying to wipe out the other team versus, okay, they're trying to, you know, get... Uh, basically take over each of the rings on the map and they're trying to dominate in that way. Um, and there's a lot more strategy uh, at times to escalation, but there's also so much strategy to execution because you get one life and that's all you get. It's like search and destroy in call of duty, similar to that of CSGO. Simplicity, I think is actually going to help grow the esports scene of gears of war even more. And so uh, execution over escalation, I think they should at least try it. I think that would be a really good idea. I know they tested it, but I really think they should do it moving into gear six, just for the simplicity's sake for new viewers. That leads me guys into number four, going back to the campaign here, uh, going backwards. I think that with gear six, we need to have one last hoorah with Marcus Phoenix and or JD Phoenix. I love Kate Diaz. I think she's a great character. Absolutely awesome. I love her um, and I think she's great. But I really want to see us get one last, you know, go around with Marcus Phoenix as the main character of the game uh, or JD. I feel like I didn't like the direction they went in with JD Phoenix in Gears 5. I thought that they kind of made him out to be a douchebag, and I didn't really like that concept um, from Gears 4. So in this one, I really would like to go back to Marcus one last time. And I think there's nothing, obviously, I, I love Kate Diaz, and I'm not, I'm not against us playing as her again in the future. But I think in this game, guys, it needs to be that one last time that we play as Marcus Phoenix and or JD Phoenix before, you know, things continue changing. Because we really only got one game with JD Phoenix, and I really like him as a character. I was just starting to really like him. Then you get thrown into playing as Kate Diaz, which I love her as a character as well. The Coalition has done a great job of creating new characters, but... I just think it's important that we play as Marcus one last time. Even though we've had our time with Marcus, um, I would like one more go around with that. Even if the game is kind of split like The Last of Us, where you play half the game as you know Marcus and half the game as JD or something like that, I would love that concept. And that leads me, guys, into the last part, which is free-to-play. Uh, we've already alluded to this. I want to see Gears of War, uh, that being Gears 6, go free-to-play. I think it would be huge for, uh, as far as the multiplayer is concerned, just the multiplayer, I think going free to play would be absolutely massive for the coalition. It would be massive for, uh, the, just the game as a whole. I would love to see it. Absolutely would love to see free to play come out of, of gears where I think it would continue helping build upon what there's, what they've really got to at this point with the coalition continuing to build the legacy, the lore, continue building the fan base that is that is Gears of War. I think that could be huge moving into Gear 6. So free to play guys, please make that happen. Um, now one other thing that I had as an honorable mention is Battle Royale. Now there's a lot of talk right now guys that Halo Infinite's going to have a Battle Royale mode and there's certainly pros and cons. But one thing that I love about Gears is is that I I love the evolution of what they've done with Gears Pop. You have, you know, Gears Tactics, all these great modes, man. They do such a good job with that. And I think that they would knock it out of the park with a Gears Battle Royale. Certainly people out there would be trying it out, um, especially if it was free to play. I think it'd be huge for, for Gears of War as a, as a game. And uh, you know, um, even just people trying it out to see what they think of it, I think that could be absolutely huge for Gears of War as a whole. And so a Battle Royale for Gears could really could really get uh, somewhere, I, I believe. I think that there's truly something there. Uh, how they would do it, guys, I mean, we, that's another conversation for another day, but I would not mind seeing Battle Royale. And I know some people feel one way or another about Battle Royale. I'm certainly not very good at playing Battle Royale games 
But what I will say is, you look at Call of Duty Warzone. I mean, it's one of the biggest battle royales in the world. That's putting Call of Duty just on a further pedestal than what it's already at. You look at, you know, all kinds of other titles out there, guys, that are that are battle royale, have battle royale modes to them that really create a uh, just more ways that you can engage and play uh, and be in that world and in that lore. So that is for me, guys, what I would really like to see. And I would love to hear from you guys what you would all want to see in Gear 6 and how can the Coalition improve Gear 6. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, for more Gear 6 content, guys, definitely check out all of the videos that I've put up on the YouTube channel. And so with that, guys, I wanted to go ahead and wrap up this very first episode of the Gears Cast. I want to say thank you so much, guys, um, for all the support that you guys have given me uh, on my YouTube channel. And I'm really excited about this next continuation, um, you know, moving forward edition of six new shows on the YouTube channel. Uh, content every single day, guys, as always. And things are changing a little bit. You know, the April show now going to a weekly show, but I think it's going to be for the better. You're going to get a Gears cast every single week moving forward, guys. And that's a, a very exciting thing for me. But let me know, guys. What did you guys think? Let me know. Let's have a real conversation about it. And for more, the Gears cast, guys, content and videos, stay here with Zero TV.